Welcome to part 2 in our series of GraphPad PRISM tutorials. In the previous video, we introduced the different table and graph types that PRISM enables us to use in order to graph and analyze our data. Here, we will demonstrate how easy it is to make a very nice looking XY graph in PRISM. If you do not already have the latest version of PRISM, but would like to try it out, you can download a free 30-day trial by clicking on the link below or in the video description. As you can see here, we have an Excel spreadsheet with some data that we can use to practice making different XY graphs in PRISM. In this first data table, heart rate was recorded for two different treatment groups from 0 to 8 hours. In this example, the independent variable is time, which is in the first column, and the dependent variable is heart rate for each of these treatment groups. So in an XY graph, time will be on the X axis and a heart rate would be on the Y axis. Let's select all of our data, including the titles, and copy the data. Now that we have the data copied, we will open up PRISM. As we saw in the last video, the welcome screen greets us and asks us which type of a table and a graph we would like to make. We will select the XY tab because we want to make an XY graph. As for the options to the right, we will leave the first box unchecked because our X values, which in this case is time, were all precise numbers that don't require any horizontal error bars. In a couple of minutes, I will illustrate what this option may be useful for. As for the next option, we will select Enter and plot a single Y value for each point. Now you may be wondering, why did we select Enter and plot a single Y value for each time point, when in our original data, we have two different columns that we want to plot on the Y axis? And the answer to that is that the single Y value for each point refers to how many measurements we have within a treatment group. So since we only have one measurement of heart rate at time zero for treatment group one, that means we only want to plot a single Y value for each point. If, for example, we had two measurements of heart rate taken at this time point for each treatment group, as we have in this graph here, to the right where you can see with time we have two measurements of heart rate for example let's say we had two patients that were treated with treatment one and we measured their heart rate at each of these time points then in that case what we'd want to do is enter two replicate values in side by side columns and we're going to illustrate what that does in the next step but first let's select and plot a single y value since we're going to plot this first data table and we're going to hit create you can see that we have created an empty data table and it's called data1 and there's a corresponding graph called data1 as well. By selecting the data table, you can see in our workspace that we have a table that contains one column for x values and then multiple columns for y values. Each of the columns for y values is labeled group A group B, and group C, and so on. And that means that each column of Y values represents a different treatment group that can be graphed. Since we copied our data table with the titles, time and treatments one and two, we can paste our data with its titles right in this row here. You can see that the title for the X axis is time and hours, and the title for each of the groups is Treatment 1 and Treatment 2, just as we want it to be. The data are all arranged in the appropriate columns, so now we can see how our data looks by clicking on the graph for Data 1. The pop-up window that appears gives us a few different choices for how we might want our graph to look. We can choose the graph with points and no connecting lines as a starting point. So before we begin, let me just zoom in a little bit to make it easier to see. Now you can see here that treatment groups 1 and 2 are each represented by different symbols, but the symbols look pretty similar, making it hard to distinguish the trends in the graph. 
To fix this, all we have to do is double click on one of the symbols and a window will appear that will allow us to change the appearance of those data sets on the graph. Right now you can see that we have treatment 2 selected and we can easily toggle between the different treatment groups or we can change all the data sets at once. Some of the settings that we can control include the color of the symbols as well as their shape, their size, and also whether they have a connecting curve or a connecting line. Let's make the color of treatment to blue. And we can change the color of treatment 1 to red. If we hit apply, you can see now that the colors are a little bit easier to distinguish. And if we so desire, we can add connecting lines. And it makes the graph look like that. In addition to changing the appearance of the data sets on the graph, we can also add titles to the axes very easily. To add a y axis title, we'll simply click right here and type in our desired title. We can similarly give the entire graph a title, or we can just delete it. In addition, the size of all the text in the graph can be easily changed. Just select anything that you want to change and click on these up arrow or down arrows to increase or decrease the size accordingly. You can also adjust the size and the shape of the graph itself by clicking once on the axis and then dragging it up or down as desired. In addition, you can move the legends around as you wish. You can select them both and move them together too. Finally, you can adjust the axes by double clicking on them. You can see that the dialog box that appears allows us to change the x axis the left y-axis, and if we wanted to, even we could have a right y-axis. And one thing that we can do here is we can change the scale of the x-axis. We can make it from a linear to a logarithmic scale, or even probability scales. Let me just show you what happens if we change it to a logarithmic scale briefly. So you can see now that we have a log 2 scale. And here's a log 10 scale that you might be more familiar with. But linear looks best for the type of data that we're graphing here. In order to change the range of the values plotted by the axis, all we have to do is uncheck the automatically determined box, and then enter the desired minimum and maximum that we would like the graph to show. So for example, we could show from 2 to 8 instead of the full range. And when we hit apply, you can see now that we're only graphing from 2 to 8 as opposed to 0 to 10 as it was before. You can also change the interval between the different tick marks that you see on the screen here. So for example, instead of having the interval being 2, we can make it a 1. And then when we hit apply, you can see that there's now tick marks spaced by 1 instead of 2. So now that we've discussed how to make a basic XY graph and change its properties, let's go back and discuss the other options that we encountered when creating the table. So let's go back to our Excel spreadsheet. As we mentioned before, for this next data set, we have something similar to what we just saw before, only now we have two measurements for each treatment group. Another way of saying this is that there are two replicate measurements for each treatment group at each time point. Now keep in mind that if we wanted to graph this data in a program like Excel, we would normally need to calculate the average and the standard deviation of each of the replicate measurements and then graph those average and standard deviations using a very lengthy, cumbersome process. As I will show you now, GraphPad Prism makes the process of graphing this data with error bars very easy. First, we will select the data with the titles and then copy it. Now we will go back to Prism 
Under the XY tab as we were before, we are going to select enter two replicate values in side-by-side -side columns, as we discussed earlier. If our original data contained three replicate measurements or four replicate measurements for each treatment group at each time point, then what we would do is simply increase this number accordingly with however many replicate values we have. In this case, we only have two replicate values. So now we're going to hit Create. Now in the new data table, which has been labeled Data 2, since Data 1 was what we used last time, you can see in Data 2 that for each treatment group, we now have two subcolumns. And each of those subcolumns is designed to accommodate one of our replicate measurements. Now what we're going to do is we are going to paste our data as before, including the titles, since we copied those titles. And you can see now that on the far left column, we have our x values, which are time just as before. And in each of our treatment groups, we have one of our replicate measurements in each of the subcolumns. Since all of our data are in the proper places, we are going to click on the graph of data 2. And again, this familiar dialog box has appeared asking us how we want our graph to look. To make things easy, let's just select the same option as before and hit OK. You can see that Prism has automatically taken the data that we entered and has calculated the averages and the standard deviations of our data and plotted it. If we double click on one of the data points, you can see that we are now plotting the mean and the error of our data. And we have the option to choose between whether we want to plot the standard deviation or, for example, if we want the error bars to show the standard error of the mean. If we hit apply, you can see the adjustment is taking place by doing that option. We can also show the 95% confidence interval by clicking that button there. And you can see that we can very easily adjust the analysis of our data with one click of a button. We also have additional options for the appearance of the error bars. We can adjust, for example, the color of them or the direction, whether they go above or below or in both directions, as we have shown here. And you can also change the style and the shape of the error bars as well. You can also adjust the thickness. Another thing to note is that we can easily change this graph such that it shows each individual replicate using the appearance drop down menu here. Now we've only made that change for treatment group number one. If we wanted to, we could change all of the data sets the same way by clicking once again on each replicate and hitting apply. And again, we have the same problem where the symbols look a little bit too similar. So we can change one of them to a different color, for example. And that makes it a little bit easier to see what's going on. So now that we have looked at how to plot an XY graph with means and error bars in the Y direction, or by plotting individual replicates for each treatment group, let's conclude by showing how we can make a graph with means and error bars in the X direction as well. Let's make a new data table and a graph. And we'll go back to our Excel spreadsheet. So for the next example, we have exactly the same data table as was shown before, except that we have an additional column after our time measurements, which contains errors for our time measurements. Now, the error doesn't have to be the same for each time point, but for the sake of example, let's just assume that it takes considerable time for us to measure the heart rate, so the error of each of the time points at which the heart rate was measured came out to be 0.2 hours. To graph this, we will copy the data just as we did before with the titles. And we will go back to Prism. Under the XY tab as before, we will select Enter two replicates in side-by-side -side columns for the Y axis. In addition to that, we will also select this checkbox for Enter the X error values to plot horizontal error bars. Now let's click Create. So now you can see that the new data table created, which is data table three, 
contains two columns for our x data. One is for the x values themselves, and the other is for the error. When we paste our data, starting with the title row, you can see that the x values are in the appropriate column, and the error bars are immediately after them. And now all of our y values for the different treatment groups are in the appropriate columns as well. When we look at the graph created for this data, we'll select again the same option that we did before. You can see now that there are error bars going both in the y direction and in the x direction, which those are the 0.2 error bars that we inputted for our x-axis values. So now you have seen how easy it is to create an xy graph in PRISM with and without error bars. You have also seen how to select various items on the graph and use the toolbar above in order to adjust their size and their shape. You've also seen how you can drag different items on the graph to reshape them or double click on them in order to format them as desired. If this tutorial was helpful, please click the like button below and share it with others. You can also subscribe to our channel for updates when new videos are released. Thanks for watching.